Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and we like to watercolor. We do a new project every single week. We break it down step by step so you can follow along whether you're new or just trying something else or you do this a lot. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so the project we are doing today is Daisy Delight. Ah, a lot of fun bright colors, really loose. We're going to be doing some negative painting. Which is interesting to me. Yep. Because painting is so positive. <laughs> that was good. And we are using four colors for this project. So the four colors we are using for this project are deep yellow and leaf green and magenta or Magenta. Magenta? <laughs> That's not correct. No. <laughs> or berry blue. Uh, and berry blue, not or. <laughs> Instead of magenta. <laughs> Those four colors. We are using a round six and a round two brush. They're wonderful brushes. They're printed Princeton Heritage Series. You can get them on letsmakeart.com if you need some wonderful brushes. We're using Canson cold press 140 pound paper. It's the same that's in the kits and the subscription. So I'm using the same paper you will get. Um, and I taped off the edges. And I taped off the edges on this project because we're gonna actually be filling this entire thing with paint and water. And because this is not like a super thick watercolor paper, it will start to warp. So to kind of help with the warping and keep it to a minimum, I tape the edges. And it gives me a nice clean edge. Smart. Um, so we're gonna do this project in five steps. So the very first step, we're actually going to roughly draw our flowers. There is no outline for this project. It is freehand, but I will show you guys just a little bit of tricks that you can do to get the shape of your flowers down. Um, step number two, we will do the background, um, like leaves and flowers. Step number three, we will then work on the white flowers. Step number four, we would then put in the green leaves. And step number five is just um, finishing details. So when I say negative space painting, what I mean by that is, there, so there's two things in a painting, negative space and positive space. Usually your main subject, subject matter in a painting is considered positive space. So our flowers, since those I would consider probably the main subject, are our positive space. When you do a negative space painting, what you essentially do is you paint all around the positive space painting and then therefore define that positive space by not painting it at all. Does that make sense? Yes. So, and then for us, so what we did that's part of the process is we're gonna draw these flowers out, including the leaves, and we're gonna paint all around them. By painting all around them, we then define them. And then um, I'm actually gonna go in and, and paint in some colors and leaves. So they don't, the entire thing doesn't stay white, just some of the petals. Does that make sense? Cool. Okay. So when you're doing your flowers, um, I just did kind of daisies. You can do whatever kind of flowers you want. And then um, sometimes it's really helpful if you sketch like the shape of the flower you want to get and then you put in the petals. So for example, like here I have kind of more like a black eyed Susan kind of shape a little bit, okay? Which it's my painting, I can do whatever I want. So is that considered a daisy? No. no. Am I making it a daisy? Yep. Yes. And do I have that power? Yes, I do. <laughs> and so do you. So you can do whatever you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this center, which is kind of bulbous. It's kind of like a gumdrop. Mm. Okay. And then if I want it to like splay down, then I'm going to essentially like draw a skirt. Now it looks like a spaceship. I was going to say it looks like a UFO. <laughs> Okay, so now I have my general shape, and then now I can put in my petals because this is the shape I want. So now I'm just gonna go in and put in the petals. Or it looks like a little uh, dress. Yeah, or a little dress. And then you can erase the lines that are in between the petals. And now you have your little cute little daisy shape. 
Okay. And you can make your flowers pointy. Sometimes daisies have kind of like this, um, not a totally point edge, it's kind of like edge. That's all I can say. Like someone took a bite out of it? Is yeah, that, okay. kind of, a little bit. And then, okay, so for my other flowers, like these ones, um, I want it to be almost turning away from me. So I'm gonna do my center. Again, kind of like a gumdrop. And then I want the back petals to flay up. So I'm gonna do the opposite skirt, so they'll flay up. And then the bottom ones, because the flower's turning away from me, will not be as long, okay? So, um, so then here's kind of like my flower shape. And then you can use this same trick. I mean, if you tighten, if you like get rid of the center, that could be like a poppy or the start of a rose or something, you know what I mean? So when you're, when you're looking at flowers, instead of like having to like think of like, oh, each petal and each thing, just look at the general shape that it's making and be like, okay, that's kind of more of a, of an oval, the center is right here, the top part is bigger in height than the bottom part. And if you just break it down by shape and then put in the petals, it's not as overwhelming. And it can help you compositionally. So center, have my center peeking out. Now I'm gonna put in my petals and I'm just kind of following the shape that I've already laid out. And then I'm also gonna put in the stems. So I'm gonna, and again, you can make them, you can make your leaves as long as you would like. Are these how leaves are on actual daisies? I don't know, so sorry. Flowers are, they're tough to know things about. <laughs> There's so many different There's a lot kinds. of words to go with flowers. <laughs> but I am kind of having them all come from the center area. Now you'll notice that they're not touching. I don't want them to come out from a specific point. Like, what, like I, I want them to come out from a general area. So like, they'll all come out from like this inch and a half space. If I have them all coming out from one point, then that is really going to make this feel like squished and make me feel like I need to put something here to why they're squished together, like a ribbon or, you know what I mean? So I'm just kind of having them generally come from the same area, but they're not touching. Again, though, I'm giving you the right to do whatever you want for your own painting, so you don't have to listen to me if you don't want to. And then I'm going to do another flower here. And then same thing. Top is a little bit longer than the bottom. That's the general shape. And then I go in and I put my petals. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with drawing and you're getting really mad at this point, calm down. Don't get mad, it's okay. And also, florals are super forgiving with watercolor. So if you just have a center on a flower, on a round shape, people will understand that it's a flower. So don't, like, don't give up at this step. Keep painting, just start painting, okay? Don't. You can make a spaceship look like a flower, so you're fine. If I just made a spaceship look like a flower, yeah. you will be fine whatever you make. Absolutely. So don't worry about it. Just, just like, go for it and give your, give your thing a chance before you give up, okay? So this is what I'm going to avoid when I'm starting to do my background, okay? These are my three main. And then now, if you want, you can start putting in just like, okay, I'm gonna want a leaf coming out over here. So I'm gonna put that in. Um, I'm gonna have a leaf coming up this way. And now I'm just kinda trying to fill in the space. Now, you'll see that this is not a standard bouquet, and what I mean is um, I have leaves that are just starting and stopping randomly. You, that's okay. This is a different kind of painting. This isn't super realistic. This is more illustrative. So it's okay to have a floating leaf. It's or a dream a leaf. Flower. Yeah. And then I'm going to have some like flowers come over this way, cross my composition. Yeah. 
have some down here, have some leaves. And remember, you can always add these in later too. So maybe you started putting this in and then as you're painting, you're like, man, I still need more. Put some in later. This is just to get us started. Okay, so that's step one. Now we're gonna move on to step two. We're gonna start with the background. So what I'm gonna do for that, I'm gonna use my round six. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by putting in color on my leaves. Not all my leaves, just this one on the top left, okay? So I'm just using my round six and filling it in. If you wanna get a darker green, you can take your leaf green and mix it a little bit with the berry blue to get a little bit of a darker color, like a bluish green, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna leave that. And then I'll do this green leaf kinda right here. I'm, I'm still avoiding my main three flowers with the leaves on there. I'm not doing those quite yet. And now I'm gonna do this like purple bud flower thing. So I'm gonna mix magenta with some Mary Blue to get this really pretty purpley pink color. And I'm just gonna start putting these in. Now I'm not being super exact because I'm actually gonna take a damp brush and blend all of this out. So I'm not like, this leaf has to be totally sharp and perfect because it, it's not gonna matter. Okay, so now is where we start blending, okay? So, and I'm kind of doing this in sections, sections. So, um, yeah, sections, here we go. I'm gonna take a damp, clean brush and I'm just gonna pull color from the leaf that I filled in and just start blending out, avoiding the white flower and the stem of the daisies. And then I'm gonna put in, so basically I'm just trying to fill my background and work around my subjects, okay? And so I'm, I'm gonna drop in some yellow too, here. And then I'm just gonna keep going. Blending out, pulling from the paint of the leaves. Working around the petals of the daisy and the stem and the leaves. Now you might be like, Sarah, my leaves are totally a mess now. You can't tell what they are. Don't worry, we're, we'll go back in and define them. For right now, we're just being messy and blending and being loose, so don't stress. Just keep, just, it's gonna be okay. And then what I'm going to do is I want to transition to other colors, but I don't want to transition from green right to purple because if they mix together, they can create a muddy color. So what I can do is use yellow as a way to transfer, okay? So I'm gonna put some yellow in. And now I can transfer that yellow to pink. And it won't get muddy. And I'm using a decent amount of water here. And now I can maybe grab some of this purple. So I'm basically doing like kind of a more abstract background where, and by abstract, I um, sometimes people get the term abstract confused. Abstract doesn't mean stylized. Um, so if you do kind of like a funky vase, that's not an abstract vase. Um, abstract means that there is no discernible form, okay? So if you can tell that it's a vase, it's not abstract. 
it's stylized with different things. So, yeah. So, um, so I'm I'm just doing color changes. Um, I'm not trying to create any forms within these color changes. So that would be more of an abstract background. So you know. is abstract, and this is out of left field, but yeah. Jackson Pollock, mm -hmm. he was abstract. Abstract ex expressionism. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fun fact, do you know how much one of his paintings sold? It was the most expensive paintings. Millions. 140 millions. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, uh, Pollock was really interesting because he was, he was more interested in painting the unconscious. So he wouldn't... Um, that was kind of his thing. So from what I remember, my art history classes, if I'm correct, was like, um, it was all about accidental art and all about exploring the unconscious and doing a bunch of different materials and using different materials to splatter and things like that. So, Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So we're just going to keep going on. So basically how I filled in this color on the left, I'm going to want to do that all the way around while avoiding my daisies, okay? So, um, and then also, as you guys see, like my leaves and my flowers are main here, but I do have some darker areas of just like color, and that's because I thought that if we just leave it bare with the light washes, it kind of seems empty. So I'm gonna go in there and just be like, you know, here's kind of like some buds here and I'm gonna kind of blend those out and uh, just kind of get a little loose. So I'm not making anything in particular. I'm just trying to bring a darker value over here, okay? And you can use the, the yellow for the same thing if you're just like, just here are some dots. That's all, like, that's it. So don't be like, there are specific flowers. No, it's just like dots. Makes me think of the, the pixie dust characters. Like some child movie I'm trying to think. I don't know what it is. I'll think of it. You think of it. I'll think of it. You get back to me. Okay, so I'm going to keep going on the top. Now I finished off with green. I'm going to introduce some yellow so I can start transitioning to purple. If you want to transition from green to purple, you still can. You just got to be careful about not overlapping the colors too much. And then now I can transition to more of a pink. And, you'll see, and you can also see that I don't go from yellow to purple. I go from yellow to pink to purple. And the reason for that is because yellow and purple are complementary colors. So they would also get muddy if they mixed. Okay. And then now I can start pulling color from this like funky thing, my bud thing here. Again, I'm working around my daisies, around the stems. The movie was Fern Gully. Oh, that's a good movie. And if you need that, I need a little bit of darker value over here, so I'm just gonna drop it in. It's like a little spray of flowers. You can do it while it's wet, and if it's wet, it will bleed out like that, which I think is super cool. You can wait for it to dry if you want it to be more defined. No wrong way. Okay, now I'm going to do, I'm rinsing my brush and doing the green leaf over here. With leaves, you just want to make sure that they're bigger in the middle and narrow at the top and the bottom. And also, there are a ton of different types of leaves, so maybe you don't want to do that type of leaf. You like a different type of leaf. Go for it. It is your painting. I'm just going to put some dart dots here, and I'll do my other green. So we're still on step two. Step two is a little bit long because it's like all of our painting. So just stay with me, you guys.
Okay, now I'm gonna start blending. Are we gonna lose the shape and, de and lines on our leaves by blending out? Yes, but we'll go back and put them in. So if I want to have the purple and the green meet, I can. I'm just not letting them overlap too much. And if you're painting this and you're noticing that you don't like it when your one color overlaps with another, you can do whatever you need to do for your painting. Don't feel like you have to follow me exactly. If that's not working out for you, don't do it. Introduce some yellow in there. Now I'm gonna start blending out this purple. Now I am picking up my paintbrush a little bit just so I keep some value differentiation between here. If I just took my paintbrush and went back and forth across the entire thing over and over, it would just even out. And I want to keep some dark areas and some not dark areas. Maybe I'll drop in some more. And this is where I love watercolor painting is because we're being loose and we're dropping in water and we're splending out and we're just doing all these funky things, you're gonna get some crazy textures and you embrace them in this project. Like here, my purple really bled over to this green and it has this really cool texture going on over here. I think that's way cool. And I'm not gonna be mad. I'm not gonna be like, oh no, it created this hard line. I'm gonna be like, whoa, look at that really cool texture that created right there. I didn't even mean for that to happen. And then that's when you're like, oh, I'm so good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put some yellow. Now I'm gonna start getting into my green. If, for whatever reason, and I've seen some people have this problem and it's hard because I'm not there to see what's going on, but some people say that once they put the color down, they, it will not, like no color will blend up at all. Like no color will come off. Um, if that's happening to you, you can do one of two things. Try and work in smaller sections and work quicker. The longer the paint has to dry on the paper, the less likely it is to spread. Um, another thing that you can do is, let's say I'm trying to like blend out some color and there it's just not coming. We'll put a little bit of color on your paintbrush and blend out and pretend that it's just the leaf blending. So now I'm almost filled my paper. It's pretty saturated. You can see that it's now starting to warp a little bit. Um, that's totally normal and what would happen, so don't stress if that's happening to you. Now I'll do some pink, purple. Again, I'm not making any shapes in particular, I'm just doing color washes. Okay. And then now I have to go in and fill the spaces in between the daisies, right? Because I have this like whole white section right here. So I'm just going to go in, work around the stems, leaves, and petals. So you can see by working around, I've defined the shape, the shape of my daisies and the leaves by coloring, by painting in around it.
Focus time. <laughs> I just realized I didn't talk for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Some people are probably like, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> uh, okay. So I filled in my background. It is looking good. Um, what I like to say and do is like, we filled it in. Now let's focus on a different part of our painting and come back to the background. It's not done yet, but sometimes it's so good to take a break from one area and work on another area because when you're so into it and so focused on one area, then it's like you're not able to step back and see it clearly. So we're going to give the background a break and we're going to work on the white flowers now. So for the white flowers, I'm going to put a yellow center in my flowers. You can use a round two or a round six. Um, whatever is easier for you. I'm using my round two. I'm putting in my yellow centers. I'm making it nice and like saturated so it differentiates from the background. And then to add a little bit of dimension, I'm grabbing a tiny, tiny bit of the magenta and kind of putting it at the bottom to give it a little bit of like shadow and value change. Okay. And I'll go ahead and put in the centers on all of my flowers. Okay. This one. Okay, there are my flowers, my centers. Now, you can just leave the white white, but what I did to just help, how do I say this? Um, when you're doing watercolor and you wanna paint white flowers, the tendency is to just be like, well, the paper is white, so what do I do? But what you are essentially painting is you're painting the shadows that are on the white flowers and you let the highlights be white of the white paper, and then you paint the shadows. Usually it's like a light green or a light blue or like a light gray. But I just did a little bit of blue and watered that down. So it's kind of like a grayish color now, like a gray blue. And I just did a little bit like where these white petals are coming from the yellow. I just put a little bit of Gray there. And for me, this flower feels more complete than these two that don't have any kind of shading. Okay. So then I'll do the same thing on the other one. Now, on the ones that are turned to the side, the ones in the back are going to have that blue shadow. The ones in the front, not so much. Okay. And then we can go in and put in the green leaves on our flowers, okay? So if you want to leave them white, you absolutely can leave them white. The reason why I haven't painted them yet and I've left the spaces white is because I want them, I want these to be really sharp and to stand out. I didn't want them to get trapped in with the background and I wanted them to poke out more. So I left the space white. I'm gonna fill it with the dark green and because my background isn't wet anymore and I'm not doing the blending thing, these should stay nice and sharp. So I'm just using my round six. Put in my stem, okay? And now my leaves. And if you have little white spaces around your stem or around your leaves where you didn't perfectly fill it in, don't stress. 
I have that on the reference photo. If you look closely, there's some white spaces in there. Um, don't let that um, make you dislike your painting because nobody else will notice. Okay. And then I have another stem coming up here. And a leaf coming through here. And maybe I want one here. Okay. These flowers turned out smaller on my painting than my reference. That's okay. Um, now what we're going to do, the very last step, is we're going to go back in and redefine the leaves that we blended out and the flowers that we blended out in the background. I just like doing this... Um, because that darker value brings more focus and understanding of what's going on. But if you like your background how it is now and you've got some really cool things and you don't want to do this, don't do it. So just with my round six, I'm just going to go back in and put in these leaves and lines. And you don't have to do every single leaf. If you just want to do a little here and there, just enough to give our viewer an idea of what's going on, I think that that is good. Okay, another one down here. Okay, and then I'm going to go back in and kind of outline this area a little bit more, the, the purple bud flower things I have going on. So you can fill them in or you can just outline them, doesn't matter. Just again, kind of redefining some of the shapes that we lost. And maybe here I want to do some of these. I like how I did some darker dots over here. I'm just going to paint right on top and it's dry so they're not ble blending out. If you want them to stay sharp, wait until your background is completely dry before you do this. And don't be afraid to be a little funky with it and just be like, I want dots here. Or I want, you know what I mean? Like, Everything doesn't have to be so realistic. You can let it get a little bit whimsy. And then now it's kind of where I want you to take the time and just be like, okay, are there any spaces that are just kind of boring to me a little bit? And by boring, I just mean like, I don't know. Like for me, I feel like this space right here is just empty and it's driving me nuts and maybe a little bit down here. So to solve that down there, I'm going to put some dark purple dots. You can kind of blend them out if you want. Don't blend them all the way out though. Okay. And now I just need like that took care of that space by putting in that darker value. Okay. That's no longer like just like empty feeling. Bleh. Bleh. Now up here, okay, what can I do? Well, um, I can do some yellow dots. I, you can do a totally other leaf right here. You can do, you can try and do purple splays. You just gotta blend it out. Be careful not to make it muddy. I think I'm actually just gonna do um, some more leaves over there. So maybe your painting doesn't need this. If your painting doesn't need this, then you don't need to follow me. But I'm just gonna do a little little stem of leaves right here. And again, this isn't realistic. We can just have random leaves places. 
I am going to blend it out just a little bit so it feels more close to the background than the foreground. Okay. Maybe some yellow dots. Okay, I'm gonna take off my tape now. I feel good about it. I don't feel like that there's a space where it seems terribly boring. Uh, I shouldn't say boring, maybe empty. Empty is a better word. Um, and I feel good. I think the next thing I would change up is I would probably make my white flowers a little bit bigger. So um, just kind of keep that in mind as you're creating your own. Um, and let's do this. So I'm just gonna peel my tape away carefully. This is the satisfying part. This is the best part. And I'm doing it slowly and peeling away from my painting so if it does rip, it won't rip my actual painting. Okay, and last one. Voila! Now you have this gorgeous, clean, lined, vibrant, Daisy Delight painting. So if you painted this with us, thank you so much for painting with us. We want to see how it turned out. So tag us in it. Let's go make art on Instagram or hashtag let's make art. Uh, same on Facebook. And also we have a wonderful Facebook community that's separate from our business page called Let's Make Art Watercolor. Um, you do have to request to join it because it's a private group, but it's where people go and post what they're working on and the paintings that they've made with us. Very supportive community and really kind. So that's a great place to get started. And if you need any of these materials, we sell a single kit for $15. It comes with paint, paper, step-by-step -step instruction, or we have a subscription box, which is way more cost effective if you like what we do. So that's it. You can get all of that at letsmakeart.com. I think that's all I got to say.